Hi guys, Dane here and welcome to my September 2023 reading wrap up. Dane reads. So I only have one book for you today, that is The House on the Strand by Daphne du Maurier. I listened to this by an audio book, uh, very enjoyable, um, almost gothic in a sense. I mean, I suppose a lot of du Maurier's stuff is. Um, the only real thing that I can compare it to is Rebecca, which I did enjoy, but I had spoiled for me. It was actually in the same, uh, who is it, Virago Modern Classics. Uh, don't read the introductions of these books before the books because they'll just spoil them for you. Um, in, Ver in Rebecca as well, the front cover even had a bit of a spoiler on it too. Um, but yes, because this wasn't spoiled for me, I probably enjoyed it more than I enjoyed Rebecca. I think they're both probably pretty similar books. This also kind of reminded me a little bit of Susan Hill, although obviously Susan Hill came afterwards. Um, I'm still not 100% sold on Demarie. I like her, I don't know if I love her, um, but I gave this a strong 3.5 out of five. So there you go, for what it's worth. Alrighty guys, just two books to wrap up for you today. Uh, these are both these Penguin 60s classics, or very similar editions anyway. So the first is Franz Kafka, The Judgment and In the Penal Colony. Um, the Judgment was okay. Um, he considers it his best short story apparently, I barely even remember it. And then In the Penal Colony, one of the few stories Kafka read in public. Uh, in the Penal Colony was fantastic. Um, it was dark, we've got like a trigger warning for torture and all of that, but really interesting, really well written. Um, and just a satisfying story, you know what I mean? So I gave The Judgment and In the Penal Colony probably a strong 3.5 out of 5. Um, and then I read Bar Bar Black Sheep by Rudyard Kipling, which is basically autobiographical. Um, I mean, we've got even here, I might as well read you the, the blurb. Rudyard Kipling was born in India in 1865, but in 1871 he was sent to England to live with a foster family, an unhappy experience which is chronicled in Bar Bar Black Sheep. He is best known for his stories The Jungle Book and Kim, and Penguin publishes much of his work. Kipling's only son died in the Great War, and The Gardener is an allegory of his suffering as a parent. And yeah, I think The Gardener was the better of the two. Um, as, as it says, it's a tale of suffering, basically. If you've ever lost somebody and gone through grief, I think you'd find it interesting, especially if that was due to a, a result of war. Um, Bar Bar Black Sheep was okay. It was just kind of sad. I mean, he basically got abused as a kid, you know? It's, it's not good. Um, I mean, it was well written and stuff. It was just, as I say, it was, it was sad. At the Car Wash by Arthur Russell. Oh, I'm not in shot. Sorry about that. Um, this is my latest book that I've read. This was sent to me by um, Rattle Magazine. Really, really decent poetry. I want to read you one of the poems, actually. Um, it is a lot about the car wash that his father owned, but it's, this is my kind of poetry. Uh, I gave it a 4 out of 5, in case you're wondering. Uh, Rattle Chatbook Prize winner. I, don't, I can see why. This is easily the best thing I've had from Rattle so far. Okay, so I'm going to read you how to replace a toilet. First, have a father, one who owns a car wash where he employs poor black men, preferably those who've come north in the Great Migration, but any poor black men will do, as long as they have historical disadvantages that have translated into self-destructive behaviour that makes them targets for disdain and predatory labour practices. Grow up at his kitchen table, hear his precise mimicry of their accents, mockery of their foibles, his weirdly intimate knowledge of their weaknesses and hopes bordering on and even bleeding over into affection that never reaches all the way to respect. Go to work for your father. Start off drying the cars at the exit end and gradually learn all of the jobs while inhaling his attitudes towards the men who work beside you, although you, made differently, or is it just youth and naive sympathy, appreciate their struggle. See them come to work still drunk from the night before while you spent your summers at summer camp learning to smoke pot behind the bunkhouse. Get paid the same net one twenty-five an hour the men get, with the difference that they are living on it and you are saving up to buy a Sony stereo music system to play Carol King's Tapestry. Learn how to send men home with no work on slow days, how to absorb their abuse, their special hatred of your father, blooming when drunk, transferred to you, how to resist their requests for new uniforms to replace the warm ones that you send to the local dry cleaner for patching. Lean over their shoulders as they vacuum the cars to stop them from sucking up the change in the ashtrays. Follow them around the corner to stop them from buying beer on their 45 minute lunch for which your father charges them an hour. One Saturday at 7am, when Jerry Howard uses his one call from jail to call your father, go to the Brooklyn Men's House of Detention on Borum Place to bail him out after he got arrested during a fight with his wife. Because Jerry is your best entrance driver and it's Saturday, two days after a messy snow, and you may wash a thousand cars. Another time find Frederick Hyde hiding inside his locker after closing, hoping to burglarise the place if you lock him in. 
And listen, always listen, even when you argue against him, to your father's embattled justifications for stealing from the men's tip box, for withholding withholding taxes from men he pays off the books, and for giving them alarm clocks for Christmas, but only if they come to work that day. So you are ready one morning when someone tells you that the men's toilet is broken, and you go into that cubicle to see that it's not the flush valve or the toilet seat, but the commode itself, the vitreous bowl that is cracked from an obvious fissure from base to rim, where someone has jammed a flask-sized liquor bottle upside down in the drain and evidently stepped on the base of it, hoping that the bottle, not the commode, would break apart and flush away, so that the bottle would not be found in the trash and raise suspicions that he'd been drinking on the job. Go to your father where he sits behind his grey steel desk making tea and tell him what happened and wait while he squeezes the tea bag against the spoon and swings it deftly by the string into the waste paper basket before he looks up at you over his half moon reading glasses and says, well, fix it, Sonny. Admit you don't know how to change a toilet. Watch your father take a stubby pencil from his back pocket and draw a schematic diagram of a toilet on a writing tablet. Listen to him explain with the same patience and easygoing charm he used when he talked to your teachers on Parents' Day. The two bolts, the wax ring, the pipe wrenches, the Teflon tape. Then make up a list of parts for you and send you in his Lincoln to Davis and Warshow to get what you'll need. Then call you back at the door to remind you to put a board across the toilet before you go. Or they'll use it while you're gone and he'll have to clean out their shit by hand. Yeah, you can see why I like this. Really my kind of poetry, I loved it. Alrighty folks, just one book to wrap up for you. That is The Little Book of Veganism by Eleanor Clark. It is a little book, all about veganism. Very well done, there's some really nice recipes. I mean, I just flicked in at random simple poached pears, sweet treats. Um, it's kind of like half recipe book and then half, I guess, the philosophy of veganism. I mean, like it even tackles the plants feel pain tooth argument. Um, and I think actually has a, a really balanced answer because it says, while some recent research has suggested that plants may have a form of nervous system and feel pain when plucked from the soil, this is no reason to continue using meat and animal products. And then it, you know, points out the thing that most meat eaters forget when they make the plants feel pain argument that it uses more plants to um, raise animals for slaughter than it, uh, than it does if you just eat the plants yourself. So anyway, uh, strong four out of five. It's just easy to dip into. If you're new to veganism or you're considering it, do check it out. I'll be passing it over to my girlfriend as well. Uh, yeah, four out of five. All right, everybody, just the one book to wrap up today. That is The Pavilion on the Links by Robert Louis Stevenson. Not his best, not gonna lie. I, I still don't really know what I think about Stevenson because like I've read Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. I did enjoy that. Treasure Island wasn't as good as any of the adaptations and in terms of like Desert Island books, I prefer um, uh, Daniel Defoe for sure, um, Robinson Crusoe. So I don't know, but um, yeah, it was all right, you know. Yeah, like 3.5 out of 5 with a weak one. It's kind of um, gothic in some ways, but but... Stevenson has this style where he, he tends to overwrite things, you know, and um, I just find it hard to get on with really, so th th that's all I got for you. It, it was okay, um, yeah, it's a thrilling story of mystery and suspense, except it wasn't thrilling, mysterious or suspenseful. I guess it was mysterious, but it wasn't really thrilling or suspenseful. If you want a thrilling story of mystery and suspense, go and get uh, The House on the Strand instead by uh, Daphne de Maurier. Alrighty guys, just the one book to wrap up for you today. That is Sonny's Blues by James Baldwin. This also includes the rock pile and previous condition, but honestly it's Sonny's Blues that really stands out for me. Um, I've read a little bit of James Baldwin before, but now after reading this, I'm, I'm kind of hooked. I really want to read some more of his stuff. Um, there's heroin in this, and I always like a good heroin book, but also it's full of these sort of socio-economic concerns. What it's like to be a black man. What it's like to be a black man who's kind of being uh, subjugated by society as well. And uh, just overall some really good sort of social commentary in this, alongside a, a story that just made me want to keep reading. So I gave uh, Sunny's Blues by James Baldwin a 4 out of 5. Hi guys, me. Uh, it is me. I have three books to wrap up for you. So we have The Happy Prince by Oscar Wilde. Uh, it's four short stories. They're all kind of fairy tales with, um, I guess like, what, they, what would you call them? Like, pr not proverbs, with meanings to them anyway. Um, I don't really like fairy tales as a general rule, but I'm down for pretty much anything Oscar Wilde did. So I'm down for some Oscar Wilde fairy tales. And uh, yes, I did enjoy them. I gave them a week four out of five. Uh, the Happy Prince was probably the best of the lot, really. Um, but yes, I would encourage checking checking some of the stories out in that. As I say, there were four in that collection. Then I read uh, Richard Elman, The Trial of Oscar Wilde. And this is, again, because these are all these little penguin minis, I've actually taken them downstairs now. Um, but they're super thin books, and this is actually an excerpt from a larger non-fiction book that he wrote. 
um, about the trial of Oscar Wilde and I'd love to read the full thing. I found it super fascinating. Um, I thought I knew a lot about the Oscar Wilde trial but I guess I was wrong because I learned a ton of stuff and again this 90 odd pages of this smallish book. Um, a lot of the details and stuff that I wasn't aware of and it was really gripping especially when you consider that like a lot of it was like legal stuff and legal stuff from over a hundred years ago as well um, but it was still very readable. It kind of kept that, it was like narrative non-fiction almost in that sense. Um, so I gave that a 4 out of 5 I also read it all in one go while on an exercise bike at the gym. And then I read Haven't They Grown by Sophie Hanna. So um, this is a standalone thriller novel of hers. And um, basically the premise behind it is someone sort of sneaks a chance to go and catch up with an old friend or to go and spy on an old friend really. They go and sort of poke their nose into an old friend's business. And uh, she sees their kids and their kids haven't seemed to age at all, even though it's been 12 years, they still seem like four and five years old. Um, and we spend the novel investigating what exactly happened with this sort of slow build up of tension. It's I, it's it's pretty bog standard for a thriller really, but Sophie Anna does it pretty well. Um, I gave it like a middle of the road 3.5 out of five, but I do think it's probably one of the better Sophie Hanna thrillers that I've read so far. Um, I'm not really sure why I'm reading all of her stuff to be honest. It's just one of those things I've read in enough at this point that I'll keep on going. Um, I don't think she's the greatest author by any means, but um, she certainly she tells a decent enough story um, to keep me reading. So yes. All right, guys. So just a couple of books to wrap up for you. Um, so the first of them is The King's General by Daphne du Maurier, um, which isn't particularly. Uh, Interesting. I'm just reading the blurb here because I didn't know this. It was the first of her novels to be written at Menabilly, the model for Manderley and Rebecca. Um, it's a 17th century historical fiction piece um, and it's set in. Um, actually, it's, I say Menabilly. Maybe that's. Mmm, interesting. Uh, I think Menabilly is not pronounced like that. I think it's Men, Menabli or I can't remember how it's pronounced, but. Um, somewhere in Wales or it sounds Welsh. I've been listening to the audiobooks of De Maurier, you see, so that's that's why I've only heard it uh, written. But yeah, it's fairly boring historical fiction, to be honest. Um, it's a shame because I really liked reading um, the one whose name I've forgotten now, but the last one that I read uh, that was also set in that same location. Uh, the about, It was about I can't remember what it's called. This is a terrible wrap-up, isn't it? Anyway, whatever. Like, three, three week 3.5 out of 5. I mean, it was okay. It just wasn't really my kind of thing, you know? Um, it wasn't enjoy more enjoyable because of the fact that I listened to the audiobook, though. So there is that. And then I read A Concise Chinese to English Dictionary for Lovers by Zhao Lo Guo. This was a 5 out of 5, and I don't give those out very often. Full review of this coming soon once I film it. I did think I was going to like this because I, I read an excerpt of this as part of the Vintage Mini Moderns box set. And re like it was my favourite out of the lot then. Um, it's basically... It's about um, a Chinese woman who comes to the UK to study English. Um, and it's kind of written in her style. Like, I mean, let's see. Let's flick him. Suddenly, I bit shocked. Stop. There are some nudity in your garden. Um, so it's kind of follows her as she's learning to speak better English. She also falls in love with a bisexual man, uh, which is very interesting. Um, it's just, I don't know whether you'd call it, it's not quite coming of age because she's 23, but it's sort of coming of, uh, it does feel like coming of age because she's quite naive. I mean, she's just this sort of peasant Chinese girl is kind of how she describes herself. Her parents run a, like a shoe factory. Um, and so she doesn't know too much about the world. And in this, she discovers a lot of stuff. I mean, she even goes, she goes to a peep show at one point and is paying to watch people have sex and, you know, she loses her virginity and all of that stuff. Um, but it's just really, really moving, really well written. And also, there, like, a lot of my flags in this are where it actually made me question English as a language because it's a weird old language and seeing it through the eyes of somebody who doesn't speak fluent English was fascinating. Um, yeah, stunning. Very, very good book. I would uh, definitely be interested in reading some more of her stuff. So, yes. Shortlisted for the Orange Broadband Prize for Fiction. It should have won because it was fab. Alrighty, well those are all of the books that I read in the month of September 2023. As always, don't forget to let me know in the comments what you thought of these books, if you read any of them. Hit that like button if you've enjoyed this video. Hit that subscribe button for more and I'll see you soon for another bookish video. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.